What's up guys, in today's video, I'm gonna give you an in-depth look into my frequency separation process and show you how I separate texture and color so that I can manipulate them separately. So for the texture layer, we're gonna discuss how I use the clone stamp and the spot healing brush to fix blemishes and show you how I mix and blend transitions using the brush tool and the mixer brush. I do wanna give a big shout out before we start to my friend Roland Sanchez for allowing me to use his image for this tutorial. We took this out at our San Antonio workshop, so I felt like it was the perfect image to review frequency separation. So with that said, there is gonna be a free tutorial, free tutorial, a free action. <laughs> I'm over here excited about to say todo el pedo. There's gonna be a free action in the description below, but let's go ahead and get started and cover todo el pedo. So this is the image that I'm gonna be using as a demo. Now what I wanna show you is how we're gonna separate texture and how we're gonna separate the color using frequency separation. And in order to do that, I'm gonna give you guys a free action, and the link is gonna be in the description below. Uh, I won't be showing you the process on how I make frequency separation. There's plenty of videos that already do that. I wanna show you guys how to actually use frequency separation. So in order for this action to work, I have to duplicate my layer, and then in the actions panel, I have my FS Infante frequency separation action. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the play button, and the way this works is it's gonna prompt you and it's gonna say, what do you want your median to be? And this step here is very, very important because basically what I'm doing here is I'm separating the texture from the color. So I wanna be able to zoom in here and see at what point does the texture get removed? And in this case, if I bring it down to like seven, you'll notice that I could still see a little bit of the texture here with the color so roughly around 12 is a number where I like, where the texture kind of fades away. As you're doing this, you want to also consider, is this a close up? Is this a wide shot? Is this a full body shot? The number is gonna be different. So when you're looking at your images, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're zooming in here and ensuring that you're choosing a radius because this is going to be a very important step because this is the step that's going to separate the texture from the color and as i hit ok the action's going to go ahead and continue and it's going to go ahead and run and i'm going to kind of briefly explain some of the layers that i've created so we have a helper black and white which we're going to get to in a little bit when we're working with the color layer we have our texture so let me show you what the texture looks like i'm going to press Z on the keyboard and I'm gonna zoom in so you can see the texture. So when I click the texture layer, if I hold Alt, you'll see that now I don't have any color and I have the texture on its own layer. If I go to the color layer, you'll notice that now I only have the color with no texture. So essentially what I'm gonna do in a moment is I'm gonna be editing the texture separately and I'm also gonna be editing the color individually so that I don't mess up the texture and the color at the same time. So let me go ahead and turn on all these layers back on. I'm gonna take off the helper layer and I'm gonna explain what the helper layer is in a moment. The first thing that I wanna do is I wanna get on the texture layer because I wanna fix all of the blemishes in any areas that I might find in the image. So I've already identified a couple of blemishes right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. And what I'm gonna use, there's two tools that you can use for this. I can use the clone stamp. So I'm gonna make sure mine's set to normal right now. And the very important one here, because I have texture and I just wanna manipulate the texture, I gotta make sure that sample at the top is not set to all layers, because I'm gonna show you what it looks like if I leave it at all layers. So if I leave it at all layers, what you're gonna get is when I sample, let's say I want this clean, texture to be brushed over here. I'm gonna hold Alt and I'm gonna brush over. What's essentially happening is that it's sampling from everything, the color and the background there, which we don't want. Because the whole point of frequency separation is to be manipulating the texture on its own and the color on its own. So in order to do that, we have to make sure that when we're with the clone stamp, the sample says current layer. So the current layer basically means is we're gonna only be manipulating the stuff that's on this particular layer. So, as I was saying, we're gonna go ahead and zoom back in. 
I'm gonna go to the clone stamp. I'm gonna make sure my opacity is at 100 and flows at 100. And I'm also gonna be using a soft brush, soft round brush. And in this case, I might have the hardness around 28 because I'm using texture. I do want a little bit of sharp edges. So I, 28 is usually pretty good. As I'm doing this, I'm gonna sample good areas of texture to brush it over to replace. So if I hold Alt, I'm getting a clean part of the texture here. And I'm gonna click. And as I brush over, you'll see that that clean texture, which I sampled here, is now being brushed over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue. I'm gonna hold Alt right here, and I'm gonna brush. I'm gonna get rid of that texture. I'm gonna find a clean texture here. I'm gonna hold Alt. I'm gonna click that, and I'm gonna brush. And basically, my first step when I do frequency separation is I'm cleaning up any areas that are not perfect, or any areas that I wanna clean up. And as I go around, I think the blemishes are pretty easy to understand, but what's cool about this is that I have an area here in the lip. So I'm gonna zoom out. And you'll see there's an area of the lip where the texture was kind of, you know, a little bit of blocked off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sample the texture from this part of the lip and I'm gonna brush it over. So I'm gonna hold Alt and I'm gonna sample this texture and I'm gonna go ahead and brush it over. This part's a little bit off, so I'm gonna hold and click right here, Alt, click, and I'm gonna brush over. I'm gonna sample a little bit more. Let's maybe grab from maybe right here and let's grab that one. Then we have some areas down here that are off a little bit. So I'm gonna get that texture and brush it over. I'm gonna get this texture. And it's very important that you have a brush that's small, that's about the same size as the texture as you're gonna brush over. And there we go. So we've cleaned, cleaned up the lip. Let me zoom out and let me turn off the frequency separation. This is the before and then the after. So that's an easy, perfect way of showing you how working with the texture can be very beneficial. Now, I was using the clone stamp. Another option that you can use when you're on the texture layer is also using the healing brush. And it essentially works in the same way as the clone stamp. You're gonna also make sure at the top it's at current layer. And I'm gonna hold Alt, and I'm gonna click, and I'm gonna fix that blemish. Alt, click, and fix that little blemish. And moving, once again, the texture wherever I feel like it needs to be uh, adjusted. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward the video because I think you guys understand the texture part. I think this one's pretty easy to understand. And then we'll get move on to the color layer. All right, guys, so I've pretty much, so I've pretty much fixed up most of the texture here. And the rest of it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and fix it with the mixer brush now. So with the mixer brush, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna work with our color layer. We were just with our texture and we were manipulating and cleaning up areas that needed to be adjusted. Now, the way the color layer works, and I have two layers, and this is the way I make my frequency separation, is that I like two of them because I have it as a color backup, and I'm gonna show you in a moment on basically what that means. In order to manipulate the color, so this is what we're gonna be messing with right now. We're gonna be pushing and mixing colors in order to smooth out the skin, all right? So there's a couple of areas. If we look at the image I already have here ready, you'll see that I have some imperfections with the light. I goes from, it goes from like a light, then to a dark, and then light, and then dark. So I wanna smooth out this transition. Here, we have some transitions here where it gets like a dark, and then it gets a little bit darker, and then it goes back to a normal. Here, we have some transitions that are off a little bit again. The nose, we have some areas that need to be adjusted. And then some areas of color that once again, need to be mixed and pushed and blended a little bit better. So in order to do this without actually manipulating the texture and pushing texture, what we wanna do is we want to use the color layer and to be able to push and mix those colors. So in order to do that, we're gonna use something called the mixer brush and it's gonna be hidden right underneath the brush tool. So most of you guys are gonna have the brush tool. You can right click or you can click and hold and then have the mixer brush. At the top, the settings that you're gonna to need to have 
are you're going to need to have uh, this one set to transparent. You're going to have to have this one off load after uh, each stroke. You're going to need to have clean the brush after each stroke enabled. You're going to have to have custom setup, and then you have wet load mix and then flow. The wet basically means the wetness of that color as you're pushing and manipulating it. So if you've ever painted before, think of it in that way. How wet is your actual brush as you're brushing that stroke? So how soon from the moment that brush hits the piece of paper and then you push that color out, how wet is that brush and how far is that color gonna transition? The load is how much color that you're grabbing. The mix is uh, how much color am I actually mixing as I'm pushing and manipulating the color? And then the flow, you should be familiar with that, is basically how much brush am I actually pushing out? Kind of like with a normal brush when you have your opacity and then your flow. We're gonna make sure this is set to zero. Now, we're also gonna have sample all layers unchecked. Now keep in mind, these numbers up here, you might wanna play around with them. Um, I use a Wacom tablet. Depending if you use a mouse, if you use the touchpad, it's going to be different for everybody. So keep that in mind. Play around with the numbers. You might try like 40, 30, 30, 30. You might try like 50 and then 60, 60, 60. Play around with them and experiment. So let's get to it. Let's go ahead and start pushing and manipulating color. Let me show you how fast this can be as we're adjusting these areas. So the main transition that I want to adjust is here. So I'm going to go ahead and start brushing. Let me go ahead and zoom in to make sure you guys can see. And I'm going to start getting this color, right? So we had our highlights in this area. And before I actually start pushing this color, I do want to thank my friend Roland Sanchez. He's the one that actually gave me this image. And we took this in our San Antonio workshop. And it was like the perfect image to use because there's a lot of areas where I can brush in color. And then we saw early, earlier with the lips. So big shout out to Roland. He does have his own YouTube channel. I'm going to link you to his YouTube channel and his Instagram as well. So as we're going to do this, I'm going to look for colors right here, this brightness, and I'm going to push this over here. So I'm going to go ahead and start pushing this color, and you're going to start seeing that that color is slowly transitioning over. And I'm doing this very gradually. In a moment, I'm going to show you the wrong way of doing it. Okay, so just looking at there, like I did that like in what, five seconds. Let me just show you what it looks like in just the five seconds. So you see how I've already smoothed out those colors. Now it's not perfect just yet because I was just kind of showing you, but like in simple, what, three to five seconds, I was able to push that, those colors and kind of smooth them out. So I'm gonna undo that real quick because I'm gonna show you what you should not be doing. So as you're doing the mixer brush, what you're trying to achieve is smooth transition but you're also thinking about the physics of light and where shadows should be and where shadows shouldn't be. So in other words, I wouldn't try to smooth out this whole color here and kill these shadows because essentially what we're doing is you can look at the catch lights in our eye. The, the light was in this general area and there should be a shadow here. So one of the mistakes I see a lot of people doing is that they kill their shadows and they start blending in things way too much. So you wanna respect your shadows as you're doing the mixer brush. So let me go ahead and do this again. And I want you to just slowly see how I'm, oops, I'm on the texture layer. Let me go back to the color. So you're gonna see that I'm slowly blending those colors together. So we get smooth, beautiful transitions. And I'm just slowly pushing that, those colors. I'm not pushing and dragging it too far because then I'm gonna start killing the shadows once again. So I'm just gonna click and I'm just blending in the shadows ever so slightly. And once again, I'm thinking about where the light fall off was and I'm going in the same direction as the light. Okay, so I'm bringing down this light here and I'm gonna push this up ever so slightly. Let me zoom in just a little bit more so you guys can see a little bit better. I'm gonna push this one down. Let me zoom out. I'm gonna push this up just a little bit. And I'm going to show you a little trick in a moment because I think a lot of people, let me push up this little area here with the eyes. So I'm going to grab the color from here and I'm going to push it up. So it's very important as you're pushing these colors that you're pushing in the right direction. Okay. And you're grabbing color 
from the correct areas because once again the way the mixer brush works is wherever my brush is I'm gonna push and I'm gonna mix the color where I grabbed it from and this color I'm gonna push it into the area that I'm going so that's where that wetness load mix and the flow is coming from okay so let's go to the nose real quick and I'm gonna start adjusting the nose and make sure that the shadow there was a little bit of a shadow that was off here so I want to straighten some of this stuff out I'm gonna start killing a little bit of these shadows because they're a little too dark for my taste but I obviously still want to keep the shadow. I'm just going to soften it up just a little bit. I'm going to get this nose right there. And I was, as I was saying earlier, people tend to overdo the mixture brush. And I might overdo it a little bit here on purpose, just so you guys can see on your screens so it can actually uh, make sense. So I'm kind of softening up these shadows and I'm just doing small little clicks um, so that I can blend these, okay? And I'm gonna get this one, I'm gonna blend that, blend those colors. And what's cool about this once again, is I am in no way affecting the texture because the texture is on its own layer and then I have the color on its own. So essentially, if I were to turn off the texture, this is essentially, and you can do this by the way, if you want, you can turn off the texture layer and I can be working on the color layer and actually, I can actually see how I'm brushing the color and I can smooth it out, okay? And that's gonna be up to you if you wanna do it that way. Now what I use instead is I love to have this helper black and white layer. So that's why I have this in my action. So if I turn this on, this helps me see the transitions a lot easier. And for me, when I'm working with color, kind of like in Dodge and Burn. So if you do Dodge and Burn, which I'm gonna assume most of you know what Dodge and Burn is, it's essentially the same thing. I'm using the black and white to really show me where these transitions are not being smooth and where I need to basically adjust the mix of those colors, like right here. And without the helper layer, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to see where those transitions are. So use that helper layer to your advantage as you're using the mixer brush. So I got that, let me push this up a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish off the image. I'm gonna push some more color real quick. I'm gonna fast forward this. So as I was saying, some more tricks that you can do when you're using the mixer brush, because a lot of times it might be you know, difficult to see, okay, did I go too far or not? The reason why I have two color layers, I have the color backup adjust opacity layer, is if I click this, this is gonna show me a quick before and after. So this is what I've done with the mixer brush. And if I feel like I've gone too far, I can go to the opacity and I can bring this down now I never leave my opacity at 100. I'm always gonna bring that down so that I can make sure that I bring some of the natural shadows back so I don't overdo it. So the opacity, sometimes I go 90, it could be 80, 75, it just depends. And on this image right now, I'm gonna leave it at 100. And the reason why is because there's a couple of areas over here that sometimes the mixer brush, it's a little bit difficult. So like right now I still have some transitions that it goes from like a medium brown and it goes to a little bit of a darker area. So sometimes it gets frustrating using the mixer brush, especially in these little small compact areas. And I wanna work uh, in a way where it's a little bit easier for me to work with small refined areas like this. So I have an extra layer in between the texture and in between the color. So think of it like in a sandwich. So the texture is on its own, of course, the color's on its own, and I can brush in between the texture and the original color from the image and I'm gonna brush my own color here so I can smooth it out. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna get the brush tool. I'm gonna push B on the keyboard. I'm gonna push Shift B so I can go back to the brush, the regular brush. And on this brush color, what I wanna do is I wanna have the flow at one because I will slowly wanna gradually build up this color because I wanna smooth this out. So what I wanna do is I wanna sample a color from the skin here and we're going to make sure when i have my eyedropper if i right click you can push i on the keyboard and get the eyedropper you want to make sure that the sample size is set to five by five average essentially what that means is that if i zoom in if we were to have it to a point sample it's literally just going to only get just this one color and i would rather have it get an average 
from the colors around it. So that's what that five by five comes from. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sample an area right about here and I get that color. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna brush that color on the brush color layer. And I'm gonna actually manually brush in this softness and I'm gonna slowly, slowly, slowly just build this up and I'm gonna soften up these shadows. So I can also hold Alt on the keyboard if I have the brush tool. That'll also be a shortcut to get to the eyedropper. So I'm gonna resample up here and I'm gonna grab some of this color and I'm gonna grab some of this. And I'm slowly always kind of resampling colors because I want to slowly blend it in once again. And what's nice about this layer is that it's on its own layer and I can always readjust my opacity. So let's look at the before and after. So if I click this eyeball, this is the before where it was really dark and then this is the after. And as I mentioned earlier, if I feel like I went too far and maybe I flattened it out too much, I have my opacity that I can always go back to and kind of adjust. So in my case, I think I went too far. So I can always go to like 60 and right there looks good. And look at the before where it was like really dark and now it's a lot softer. I can always even make my own layer in between. So maybe I just want that one to be on its own layer because I adjusted it to 60. And let's say that there's another area that I wanna make softer. Like let's say for example, the nose here, it's a little bit um, too dark and I wanna adjust it. We'll just make a layer in between again. And we'll do the same thing. Have the brush tool, hold Alt. And I'm gonna click and I'm going to slowly just soften this up a little bit and I had the clone stamp. Loser! Go to the brush tool and go here. And there we go. And so I'm gonna slowly brush it. There we go. And once again, we're just trying to soften up this shadow. Now this isn't optional, by the way. You don't have to do this, okay? So I'm just showing you different tricks on why I have my layering system like that. There's times where I am gonna use this technique. Um, I don't use it all the time but it's really nice to use maybe when I want to soften up some transitions are a little bit um, dark, like right here. There's some areas right here. I just want to soften up those transitions. And then right here again too. And after that, once again, we can just go back, click the eyeball, check the before and after. So let's kind of look at the nose. I think right here on the nose, it did an excellent job. So look at this really dark and then soften that up. I go too far, just adjust that, op that opacity so I can see through it. Once you're done with frequency separation, it's very important to understand that the editing process doesn't just end at frequency separation. Um, I actually use just frequency separation, frequency separation just a little bit. I actually spend more of my time with dodge and burn. Um, dodge and burn is gonna really, really refine everything and polish everything. So please understand that. But when you are done with it, once again, you can just always close this uh, folder and you can always take a look at the before and after. And so this is what it would look like when it would be done essentially. So I'd have my frequency separation. Then my process would consist of going in for dodge and burn and making some more refinements to it, doing the color grading and then doing some last minute adjustments with the hair and so forth. So color grading, I'll probably actually tone it down just a little bit, let's bring it like around 85. So understand that there is a lot more outside of frequency separation when you're going in for the retouching. Now, if you're curious about retouching, uh, I do have a full edit video where you guys can watch. And I also have some color grading videos specifically on how I color grade, but also how I color grade the skin tones. So make sure you check that video out uh, thank you guys for watching. Truly appreciate it. Don't forget to download that accent. Special thanks to Roland for allowing me to use his image to demo for this frequency separation tutorial. And I'll see you guys on the next video.